He stopped doing announcements. I, I even took the announcements for him because he, he couldn't post. We did a partnership with Harry A uh, with the original Tomb Fork, and we were supposed to be like a three-way, um, so Tomb Us and something else uh, as a partnership. I took over Harry A's Discord. Same way, I, I got like lead mod because people were so upset about this uh, this uh, partnership, uh, and they wanted to exit and just call me names, and I had to, to 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 wait like two weeks for people to call me anything under the sun. They looked at my picture, told me I look like a fucking clown, like a little kid, like an idiot, like all that. I don't care. Like this is where three people can call me names, whatever they want, as long as I I get in I get in a stage and I talk about what what happens and what will happen. I don't care what people call me. So he fucked up the Harry A thing because what this guy did, he he went to a different protocol on AVAX, which is another tomb fork behind my back again. And he was doing partnerships with people and saying like, oh, I'm risky from two ohm. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna make your protocol great. Give me 6%. Okay, so those guys did 6% actually uh, someone in uh, in the crowd knows what I'm talking about. It was called Piggy Finance. Um, they, he took 6% of their protocol and didn't deliver anything. So our main partner, which was Tomb, found out about it and he, he called me. He's like, Lorenzo, what the hell is happening? Like, like, I only did this partnership with you guys because I trust you. I don't trust this guy. I never wanted to include him in the medium. I didn't want to give him any exposure, but you vouched for him. And when I heard that, I was like, what, why the fuck did I vouch for this clown? Like, why? Because he got under my skin, because I felt sorry for him, because I looked at his situation from a family perspective, and I saw that he's not happy with his wife. He always complains about his kids. He always complains about people uh, not liking him and all that crap. He's just basically a lonely man. He used to get in fights with his wife. He couldn't sleep in the bed, and he slept at the couch and all that crap. You know, it got to me. I was thinking to myself, man, this, this guy's really putting in the effort, and he's really trying, so I'm going to vouch for him in front of an investor that's worth a billion dollars, right? And I did, and I, I did wrong because this guy deserved nothing. This is just a snake. And he snaked Josh in the same way he snaked me. And he banned me from Twitter, uh, as for, sorry, from the Discord. And he said ev to everyone in the group, hey, we were 15, 16,000 members, that the protocol is failing because of fucking Lorenzo. He did all the things wrong. I'm doing everything right. So stick with me because I'm going to produce whatever I say to produce for you. And it took him two months from 800 million TVO. He got back to under 100K. So fucking clown, he doesn't know anything to do. The only thing he does is he lies. He's a compulsive liar. He gets under your skin. He looks believable if you don't know his track history. And when he gets what he wants, he fucks up. And the same fucking thing happened here. He fucked up. He convinced Josh that he's a good investment. He, he has shown proof that he's a good investment because it looked believable. Josh helped him because obviously at 1% a day, it looks very good for any sorts of investor. But the guy was running just on lies, on gas. So now what's the consensus, right? We're compiling the information. I have a lot of information from my end. I didn't pursue this at that time because I didn't want to fuck up the two home community. Uh, it would have done much worse and it would have crashed quicker. So I let it crash on its own under his decisions. But I never followed through because I, I believe in karma, you know? There's someone above us, a God that watches how we do our actions in life. And I knew at one point he's gonna fuck up because this guy is relentless in fucking up. He thinks he knows how to do things. He thinks he's worthy of people's money. And that's why I knew it, that he's gonna continue trying to produce protocols. He produced a fucking uh, project called Orcas or whatever. I just found out from someone else. Which, a good also, which also apparently got hacked. Yeah, which also apparently got hacked. And he basically charged people an NFT, I think. You had to buy an NFT with BNB. So actually, if you buy the NFT and you stake it, you get profits from a bot. Was it, I think that's the kind of consensus yeah, he built yeah. around it was, the project. It was the same trading bot. Like, who even knows if it exists at this point? Because he was paying out like paying out like a thousand dollars per week or something like that and the thing is that before he took on aviate money 
this guy had we've been through his qcoin account he had over 150 grand of losses before he took on ava money yeah the thing is i told you i think he raised on bnb from what i gathered from the nft sales between 300 and 400 thousand dollars i'll double check because it's blockchain data we'll, we'll know for certain but as i said to you he's a compulsive gambler he thinks he knows how the markets behave even past in, when i first met him he lost fifty thousand dollars on a fucking long because he does stupid longs with stupid collaterals uh, on 100x and i told him bro this is not the, the, this is the, the, so degenerate like if you don't know what you're doing you can get wiped out in five seconds he used to call me oh lorenzo i lost 10 grand i said fine um you need to stop this behavior so he never did because he the thing with this guy is i think he wants to hit the jackpot he had the jackpot so many times in his hands but it's just easier to lie to people take the money and rob pete to pay paul that's the kind of approach right he just keeps doing this recycling but the problem is my man's doxed my man has a face my man has a family my man has a house where he lives in he has kids the only thing that I'm, I'm thinking now in my head, the only thing he can actually do is sell the damn house and move to Philippines with his wife. But that's going to take time. So I'm thinking to myself, right, if he did this to Josh, Josh is, from what I gathered, I've, I've known him for 10, 20 minutes. He's a legit guy. I know this guy personally, Michael, and I, I can vouch that this is something that he would do, 100%. Because this is the kind of guy he is. Uh, he gets under your skin, uh, takes over to some extent uh, uh, your protocol or your your funds, your whatever. So once the funds went to him, he just thought that that's his money. So now it's a case of what did he do wrong with Josh? He presented a false uh, image of himself. He presented false information that looked legit. You, you couldn't question yourself. You were thinking that you're, you're talking to someone that has professional trading background and he's, he's involved in this workers project that does okay for, for its founders. So the consensus is simple. I was thinking when I looked at the, re the revenue and the numbers that they were pulling from workers, $1,000 a week when he used to do $1,000 in six hours in two home. And I was thinking to myself, is this guy really satisfied with this kind of money? He must be plotting something. So it was a matter of time you know and i'm happy i'm happy it happened and i'm not i'm not happy for you guys because it happened to you guys but there is so many ways that you can solve this right this this is not the end of the road for no one there's going to be a legal proceeding this guy exists he's not a fictional character uh he lives in the us he lives in cali so even if these things will never come back to you in the in the monetary uh, in a monetary way there's other projects that you can you guys get invested with Josh and there's stuff that they can airdrop to you guys that will make sense. There's ways to solve problems. Even if you get hacked or money leaves a protocol, if the founder and the people that he gets involved with have the desire to give you something back for, without you paying, and that sh it, it's something that in time will make your money back and give you something extra, that goes to show that this guy's here to stay. He's not here to just put the tail between the legs and just run away and say, yeah, it happened. It, I, it's nothing I can do about it. Well, it's, I don't think that's the case here. So from my perspective, you know, I'll do what I can and I'll do, in, I'll do it in your interest. I have no interest in this, zero. I run my own project. Yeah. I've been doing it for a long time. I know what I'm doing, but this is, I feel bad because it's not an insignificant fun, uh, sum of money. It's a lot of money at stake, but it's web three girls and boys one million dollars can be made in a week if you're doing the right things with a project you're on fucking bnb you have a lot of money over there i started on fucking chronos with my project so chronos is a dead chain and i'm still doing okay so you know that's my approach you know i i'm gonna get involved if josh wants and you guys want and we'll find a way to fix things and even if the money is never gonna so let's say worst case scenario the money is going never gonna come back what can we do with what's left to make it worth your time and to show you something that's worth your time? Because I think even today in crypto, even as a project, if you raise 30 grand, 40, 50 grand, if you're doing the right thing and you're doing it honestly, you can make way more. It's just a matter of time and getting involved and doing the work. If you're not ready to do the work, 
fuck ups happen all the time. You know, so many things happen. Curve fucked up. They fucked up for a hundred million dollars. They lost one or two billion in TVO from hacks. Uh, so many mango. I I I don't want to talk about all of them because there's a old a lot of projects fuck up. And bot projects, they do fuck up. I I know there was a big bot project that the guy was promising stupid money, uh, and it looked kind of interesting at one point to me. I never got invested because I I don't know who that guy is. I don't have enough background on him to make a decision. So yeah, yeah. this is my my story. You know, the thing is the thing is as well is this guy. This guy, okay, so this guy gave us over this. This guy, um, we before before we gave him any money, he lost a hundred and fifty k, and he completely lied about it. And then, and then, and then he, he and also he, um. Also, what we think he was doing, if you guys read the PDF, is he he was placing trades on one. We can't prove this, but we think he was placing trades on one one exchange account, placing long trades on one exchange account on a certain coin, and then on another coin, we think he was placing short trades on the same coin, and then taking the profit on whichever account won. Obviously, that's a theory. We cannot prove that, but yes. what we do know for sure is he he lost over a hundred and fifty grand in the exact same super weird way before we gave him money, and he was completely lying to us before we sent him money. So tell people how did you find out about the hundred fifty thousand dollars loss? We we've combed through his entire account all deposits, withdrawals, and we are still going through his trade history. He's withdrawn over 300K, which he cannot account for at all. And in in actual trade losses, he's lost 506K so far. But, but as I was saying, like, we think he was siphoning it off. We don't, like, he was making over 100 trades a day and and he was um and he never once thought to stop it like like no one just loses money on purpose like that is what we're getting at he's chasing like, bro he's a guy that chases losses siphoning it off no he chases losses he did this in two ohm when he was trading not with a protocol he was trading his own money that he made from the protocol and i told him like he, he used to tell me I lost five grand on the long. I'm gonna put in 10 grand, I'm gonna double it. I'm gonna make it back. I said, bro, stop this fucking degenerate behavior because you're just fucking yourself. So they wanted me out because he couldn't control the flow of funds with me there. Cause I always told him, if you touch people's money risky, I'll fly to you and I'll fucking, I'll, I'll beat you up personally. I don't give a fuck about your laws. I live in Europe. I'm from Eastern Europe. But we have a different kind of mentality. I, I wouldn't do that, but I have that kind of attitude. I hate people that steal. Like there's ways to give investors value without having to put your fucking money, like the hands in the pot. There's no point. If you do that, then you're a failure as a founder. You're a fucking scumbag. So that's why I left. I left. I could have made, we had an offer for two of them to be bought out for $30 million. So that meant 10, 10, 10 million dollars each. And he said, no, bro. And at that point, each of us in our wallets, we hold tokens. We used to uh, hold tokens worth a million bucks. So I had 900 and something thousand. He had 1.4 because he always had to add more than everyone else. And then Meko, which was his little bitch, had probably like 1.1. And I said to them, like, you idiots only have 2.3, 2.4 million, and you're getting 10. And you get the chance to walk away and let all the project, all the belongings, give it to this guy. He's going to run it the way he wants. He's credible in the space and so on. No, no, bro. We're not going to do it. We're far better than Tomb. We don't need him. We don't need the money. We're great for this. I said, you make no sense, bro. And that's it. And that was one of the many fuck ups that he did. I could have walked away with 10 million, but you know, 
things happen. And uh, he fucked up. I left out of 800,000. I just sat around just to help the protocols because I was seeing it dying. But getting cut off from meetings, like he went behind my back with meetings because I was sleeping and he was doing all these withdrawals with the other clown from the multisig and stupid meet meetings where I was not included. I said to I said to people like, I'm going away. I'm going to leave the project. I'm not invested anymore. I sold my stake. I crashed the price by 2% or 3% because the liquidity was so big. I walked away with 250 grand or 230 grand. And that was it, you know? I lost a lot of time in that project. I lost a lot of my nerves. Uh, I did a lot of good things for the project, but he fucked it up because he has a big ego. He doesn't know how to run shit and he definitely cannot fucking manage money. That's a fact. So yeah, he's a real guy. There's no, it's no, uh, it's not from a page of a book. I know it sounds like it's a fucking page of a book of some fictional character. This guy exists. He's as real as it gets. And he's a snake that got inside your protocol. So there will be things exactly, going man. forward that's going to be done, you know, to, to uh, have it back up and do the right things uh, by everyone. If it, the money, as, as I said, worst case scenario, the money's lost, there's ways to make it back. I mean, that's why you're in Web3. You can start with 50K and make it big in a couple of months. We made two home from $100,000 TVO to 800 million. And we had exactly. a guy that well, sold. The, yeah, thing, we, is, yeah. the thing is, we, we'll pursue him legally, but we like we personally really don't think anything is going to come of us pursuing him legally. So we're going to have to try and make everything back for everyone, which is what we're going to do over the next few months. Because le legally, like, sure, we can try and go after him, try and get his money. But that's gonna take that's gonna take years. Like, yeah, we we go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna be um putting together a recovery plan, and and we have resources, and we'll be um we'll be fixing everything. Absolutely. So what I would say from me to you, I'm a founder too. Um, get yourself a multi sig wallet. Deposit whatever funds you have left in the multisig wallet. Post the address so your community can see it, uh, and to be that that wallet address to be always available so they can check the balances, they can check outflows. So make sure that every damn cent from that wallet is accounted for uh, on any level. And then slowly, it's gonna take time, right? Because when people get burned, they get burned, they lose trust. But if they see that there's constructive things happening with what's whatever's left, they'll be more inclined to just hang through the journey. Because I, I think you have a good thing here. You have good people in. You raised enough funds. You still have some funds. There's things you can do that's going to make people happy from this horrible situation. So that's my point. That's how I would do it. You know, if fuck ups happen, that's life. But you can you can fix things. This is not lost. Nothing. If something major happens, you just have to adjust. That's what you have to do. Exactly. Cool. So I did my part. Like I, I'm I'm curious what people want to hear. Like I'm reading chat from the stage. And if you have questions and things that you want to ask, uh I don't know what's left, Aaron. Slick requested to speak. I, I don't have the authority to do that. Can't fix anything if the, if there's no money left to use. I don't know. I don't know the, the the your treasuries and stuff like that. So I can't I can't say that. Uh, would have to see the uh, we see proof. If no refunding and moving on. This guy speaking from the UK. You should be on the team now. Uh, no, I'm not from the UK. I'm I'm, I'm Romanian, half Romanian, half Jewish. I used to study in the UK. Um, as soon as he reveals how much is left, everyone will just ask for a refund. Personally, I would like a recovery plan as most of the money has probably gone. Yeah, I look, I agree with what you said. Absolutely. <laughs> I might just put Andrew Tate. No, bro. I have no affiliation to <laughs> per se human trafficking. I don't I don't agree with these things. Yeah, I do things differently. It's fine. Help us out, please. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys are funny, bro. 
Tristan and Andrew Tate. Um, so cool. I told you guys, uh, refunds, you know, when you take a refund as an investor, you know what you do? You just accept that this guy is not going to deliver for you. And you just accept the loss. That's equal to zero. Let him build. I think this guy's good. I've met him for 20 minutes. I can tell he's legit by the way he speaks. He's no snake. He doesn't have any reason to lie to any of you. Fuck ups happen. Uh, may I speak, please? Slick. Yeah, sure. Uh, do you know Slick, Josh? No, 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 we don't know him. Okay, cool. Slick, if you want to speak, just speak in the chat, then I'll reply to anything that you want to say. Where would you possibly make money back? There's many ways, many avenues you can make money. There's so many types of things you can do as a project to make the money back that are sustainable. Depend on, depending on what angle you want to hit, we can talk about it. I'm going to think about things. I have people that I work with, advisors. I come from traditional finance, so for me, the dynamics are a bit different uh, because we're a hybrid leverage fund. Uh, the problem is all the dinosaurs that I work with are over 60, 70 years old, like those men that play golf and have too much money to think about money. So when I tell them about crypto, you know what they say, Lorenzo, fuck off with your crypto scams. We're not curious. So I never raise money from hedge funds because it's almost impossible if it's not BlackRock and they don't have their own thing with the government. Can, can Josh go through the timeline when how much money he was sent? This is the first question. Yeah. Firstly, thank you very much. Uh, this is voluntary in your part, and we should all welcome your help. Please elaborate on whether you're willing to work with Josh to help create something here in the community. Absolutely, man. That's why I came in. You know, I told you the worst thing that can happen to a project is things like this, because you have a legit founder that has real intentions, he got just got snaked. Web3 is a pit full of snakes. It's full of snakes. And you know what's the biggest, the biggest problem in Web3 is greed. People are too greedy. And they're, they're used to, I remember the times when people used to tell me, I don't know if any of you guys remember, Time Wonderland. All my friends were like, Lorenzo, it's only five grand for time. Just buy some. It's going to be amazing. I said, fuck off with your when Lambo money. Time had the, a slider on the website that would calculate your returns in Lambos. And over a year, if I put in like 20 grand, it showed me that I would make five Lambos. And I was thinking to myself, are these people that stupid to put in a billion dollars in a project that has no fundamentals? It's just fake money that recirculates between investors. And it happened. It imploded because it's a Ponzi scheme. A lot of projects are Ponzi schemes. No one can give you fucking 1,000% APR, real APR. That's impossible. How the hell can you generate so much money? The only things that you can do, which is real yield, is DEXs because they have a business model, perpetuals, I don't know, uh, liquid staking. Uh, there's only a select few projects that make real yield, and your APRs are between 10 and 100%, which 100% is the, the holy grail. Uh, okay. Greed, 100%. Yeah, man, greed. A thousand percent? No, bro. Like the thing, Time Wonderland said to people that they give a hundred thousand percent APR per year. Uh, first, you need to say how much money is left, including the board. Yeah, absolutely. You need to let the community vote where to continue to get the refund. Yeah. So look, what I say, the best course of action is this evaluate because i don't know these numbers i don't know the figures yet this is something internally that needs to be done from josh's end and his team uh, evaluate what's left come up with a recovery plan for you guys to see as soon as possible give you options on what things should be done and how they should be done get some projects maybe that want to do airdrops for you guys just as a form of like thank you for being still part of the community that's that can be arranged and uh, yeah exactly you know, we've got exactly. we've got some people We've got some people who are going to be helping us out. Exactly. So there's ways to, to, to clean this mess. 
And once you guys as a community, I know at the moment it looks like it looks horrible, but when you see a, a good recovery plan and things that are set in motions with specific timelines and it they stick to the timeline, then you can have more reassurance that things happen in a specific way. So it's just a little bit of patience because things will, will move very quickly in that direction. The simple question is how much money is left? I don't think the, the exact figure, I, I don't think he wants to tell you an exact figure because they need to, to look themselves. Uh, I think Josh is in for some pain if he intends to continue this project. Why, bro? Why? Because some money, so look, if you think, how about the Curve founders that had 20 billion TVO, whatever they had, how about their pain when they lost hundreds of millions of dollars? What did people do? They sold, you know, they sold Curve. Yeah, it dropped from 80 cents to like 45 cents. What he did, he, he started selling his own tokens to people at a discount and the projects back up. Like if you know, there's always going to be paper bags. This is Web3. Some people cannot, they, 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 they hate being in the red. And when something major happens, they're the first people to walk off. These people will never make money in Web3. That's the fact. You know, when you get scared with anything in life and you don't accept anything, you just keep losing. Web3 is the best place for you to burn money. How about those NFTs? Which NFTs, man? Like <laughs> NFTs. I trust Josh. I think he needs to ensure this is more careful. Absolutely. Uh, let's get some options on the table. Absolutely, man. I told you there's ways to control uh, fuck ups. There's ways to put things to to set up multi sigs, uh, more people, advisors, proper advisors. Uh, Web three, you need some form of advising. Uh, I don't know. You get other projects involved that resonate with your loss and do something like a giveaway and help you guys like affected wallets and so on. That's a, a thing to do. Compile affected wallets, just evaluate the damage, individual damage. Lorenzo, where are you from? Uh, where were you from from the beginning? Bro, I, I never dabbled in BNB because <laughs> BNB is uh, a weird chain. You guys have a lot of money on BNB, but I think most of the meme scams and most of the, 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 the scammers and all these clowns are on BNB just because of the sheer volume of the, the money involved. That's why I never came to BNB. I watch a couple of projects on BNB, absolutely, and they, they're doing very well. But I, for me, it's like I have a cross-chain vision with what I'm building. So BNB is going to be one of the, the target chains. <laughs> How much did George send to Michael? Bro, you keep insisting with this question. You'll find it out very, very soon. Like, what can I tell you now? Now we're having an open discussion. In a couple of hours, you'll know the exact figures. If that's going to be of any help, this answer is helping you in any way, because you're the only one that's asking that question. It's going to be answered. Pretty clear that we're going to not going to absolutely you're going to get. I'm not the only one. You know, you and Aaron, you're going to get the exact details. I know for a fact that uh, Josh is going to give them to you. Um, it wasn't the right up. Michael sent 900K. How much was it actually? 900 a million. So it's yeah, a PDF. It was... have, have you read the PDF? Slick. Yeah, it's 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 in the PDF. So look, if you reimburse people now, some people will lose more than some. So what? Do you guys think that's the best approach? I don't think it is. And then what? Walk away and get invested in another project and then lose the money. Um, I no, wish there was one. The thing. the thing is, the thing is, it might be the best approach, but we're just gonna we're just gonna figure things out and put together a plan, and we'll let you guys decide on a lot of a lot of um aspects of it. Like, like you guys know me that I I was super vague for a long time because I was dealing with this fucking shit the whole time and I didn't know what to do and. We were trying to, we were trying to get Michael to pay it back, and like we were trying to figure out what actually, what actually, like happened. Like we were going through the account, 
at first we at first he was telling us he was robbed then he was telling us that he lost the money and then now we're finding out that he lost money before we even gave him money and then like it, it's just it's just a complete fuck around and it's been a complete fuck around for like two months straight it's so bad big max i don't think it's about i don't think he had the intention to lie to you guys i think he had the intention to recoup the money without letting you know about the situation because he he thought he's in a position where he can actually convince the guy to give the money back which was not the case. Well, the thing is, the thing is, we knew Michael. We knew Michael was li- was lying, like had lied in the past, and we were trying to use that as leverage to get money back. We were saying we're going to come out with this story if you don't give us the money back, and he agrees. And you know, like he just he just kept on flaking. He gave you a story. It looked good. He promised you a, an action plan that could have happened, and it didn't have happened. Exactly. Look, there's ways to to handle this situation. What kind of, you know, I don't know anything about you guys. How about you walk me through your project? And I don't think like, look, I know a lot of people are upset, but when you build a recovery plan, you can't be vague about it, especially now in this kind of situation. When you build a recovery plan uh, that is vague, uh, it's not going to inspire any credibility. So it needs it needs a bit of time to think the right things. AMAs help, Discord AMAs, Twitter AMAs, whatever. Get the community involved. These people are invested in you. There's ways to, to handle in these kind of murky waters. So I don't know. I, I told you, from my perspective, what whatever you have left in, in funds, is a huge amount like uh, some projects will struggle to raise the kind of money you raised so even what's left so there's ways to to handle things i don't know i don't understand i don't know yet from your perspective how the project even runs yeah we're moving forward we're like i'm gonna completely change how the project is run you guys have to understand that the reason everything was so weird and vague was I was trying to figure out this situation and I was trying to get the best outcome for everyone. But now that, now that we've kind of like pulled the bandaid off, like we've announced everything. So from now on, we're going to run this in a completely different way. We'll let you guys make the decisions on, on what we want to do like moving forward but you guys just got to give us time to kind of um to kind of put together a plan and to also compile all evidence we have on michael and post it as well what was done with the funds that weren't with michael why why is there no return well i (laughs) this question that so the funds are in a wallet is it in the multi-sig where where is the the rest yeah they're on an exchange the thing is, we had them in a conservative bot, and the conservative bot was super slow. It, it's all in the PDF, guys. Please read it. Look, when you compile a recovery plan and you have investors, you give investors options. The more options they have, the better for them is to is to get involved in the decision making, right? Make it transparent. This is how things should be run. Uh, I've seen recovery plans uh, with friends from Phantom that worked. Uh, and there was zero hope for projects and they still recovered zero. Like everybody with discords with thousands of people that said like, fucking, I have a dead token. I don't believe in this anymore. This is not going to happen. And it happened. It's because if the right people get involved, there's going to be a clear direction in which way you want to go. So look, it's so easy to just point fingers. And I know fuck ups happen and mistakes happened. But if this guy is honest with you and he's going to show you the all the proof that you need under the sun, that from his perspective, he did, he had real intentions with this guy, then you can't really question uh, him, his integrity, his moral integrity. You can question that he made a bad choice. Yeah, sure. But you, you cannot question that he wants to change and he wants to do the right things. So when you build a recovery plan, you're going to make something. So let's say how much was lost? 900000 a million dollars. 
well, the first question that you have to ask yourself is how the fuck am I going to make that money with whatever I have left and how long is it going to take me? So option A, if I build this or I do that, it's going to take me three months. Realistically speaking, best case scenario, three months. Worst case scenario, six, seven, eight. Just give things reassurance and give like real clear numbers because every fucking project and this is true if it's not run like a business in web3 it just fails it's either a ponzi scheme it has no real revenue it doesn't do anything so it's just fugazi it's a mirage every project that you see even fucking pepe pepe is a mirage it, it won't do shiba it won't do doge it, it it just goes to show those people in pepe uh they sold uh, I think a week ago, they sold millions of dollars of their tokens that were supposed to be uh, central exchange only tokens that were never supposed to be sold because they got to a point where they didn't see any direction for the project. So they started selling internally and it, it dumped on the price. But people still believe in it because they didn't have enough supply. But now ask yourselves if the Pepe guys had 20, 25 percent of the Pepe supply as inter internally as a team. What would have happened then? They obviously would have sold, walked away, and fucked people for $600 million, and plus the exchanges. So just think, think logically, right? If you're a project that doesn't have a clear direction of how to make money, real money, real yield, you're just another mirage. You're just showing people fake gains and fake hope, and uh, in a couple of months to a year, you'll, you'll be gone. It's, it's facts. So give the guy a chance. It won't take long. He's going to have good answers for you. I'll help him around. I don't mind doing that because I feel for you guys because I've been through this shit again uh, with Michael and other people that I trusted. I remember I wanted to build an NFT project. So look, this is a real story. I, it took me four months to build it. it was, that's why my handle is CTA Avenue on Twitter. So it was supposed to be a, like a, 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 a guy, like the picture of a guy that likes to trade it, and it looked similar to Bored Apes. So that was my idea because people used to love fucking Bored Apes. And I said, like, why don't we do a human in a suit that trades crypto and looks similar to Bored Ape from like the facials and shit? Just a man. So I built the project, had like 7,000 members. I got a mod from Philippines. Okay, so listen to this. It's so funny. Um, so she was a girl and i don't care if it's a girl or a man but she started crying like lorenzo my house is flooded uh my my granny's in hospital my mom's sick okay fine can you please send me a thousand dollars i said yeah sure cool so i was supposed to pay this girl and her team on on a weekly basis and i one week i wasn't in the country so i had no signal i didn't pay her 50 bucks 50 after I paid her three or four thousand dollars, I didn't pay her fifty bucks. You know what she did? She closed and deleted my server. My Good fucking damn. four months of work. She deleted my server for fifty dollars after I gave her four thousand. So that's fuck. what I'm saying. Like this, this space is crazy. How it's many crazy. people did you have in it? Seven thousand people, and they were all real, bro. No bots. Oh my god. Yeah. So I, I'm 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 kind of you know I told you I'm I'm sick of Web3 in that extent. But I the the thing is, I come from traditional finance. I'm used to eight percent, five percent, six percent. It's not exciting, bro. Unless you manage tens of billions, it's not exciting at all. And it's always dealing with this crusty old men that only like real estate and all that crap. I'm sick of it. So at least Web3 is a trill. You know, when things like this happen, I'm thrilled, man. My heartbeat is 190 beats per second. <clears throat> so well, uh, let me is, The thing is, it's like, it's like a cesspit of like greedy as fuck scammers, pretty much. Yeah, absolutely. So let me read comments. Guy, I have some figures and PDF explaining where the cash is going. Yeah, the, I've read the PDF completely, top to bottom. I know a lot of you guys are apes. You don't like to read, especially in BNB. You guys don't like to read. You just like the Dex tools, the charts. Look at the charts. You see like pumps. That's it. We're in. Doesn't we grow too? We know one system we raised. Where's the rest? I'm sitting on an exchange under Josh's control that he can't tell us how much is left. I told you, look. It's going to be a multi-sig 
I think if you build, what kind of multi six do you guys have on BNB? I don't know. Do you have Gnosis? I'm not condescending, Slick. I'm just saying honestly. Josh had no multi sig. I don't know what kind of you have Gnosis on BNB. Gnosis safe. Good. So Gnosis is a multi sig. Yeah, I used to use Gnosis in Phantom. That's why I ask. Good. So Gnosis is a. a I think Gnosis is safer than it's, to some extent a central exchange. And also it's good because it's on-chain transparency. You can actually go click the click the address and see how much money is that in, in that particular address. The more SIGs you have and the more rules you have on the SIG in Gnosis. So let's say if you have four SIGs, only five or like three out of four need to sign for the money to come out. So that's the best way, but it needs to be different people. Um, Good. Yeah, well, Gnosis is a good place to store money on chain without having to worry, plus ledgers, obviously, because there's so many phishing scams and phishing links. So if there, if it's Gnosis with a couple of wallets that are hooked up to ledgers, you're safe. Yeah, if the money is put... Exactly. The, uh, the first thing I was thinking about was a multi-sig. So you can monitor the money. That's the first thing I said to you guys. You can see that the money is there. It doesn't move around. It needs more people to sign it out. So it's safe. Uh, did funds go into Famco? I don't know what Famco is. Give the money to the same guy who's the poor judgment to mismanage. Bro, Dude, if you think that's the best part. Those were the returns from Michael. He was giving us fake logs and saying we were making like nothing. Anywhere, and can we see who is authorized? Absolutely, yeah. You can see the, the addresses that hold the multi sig, yeah. Just promised the true seeker wallet. Josh promised the true seeker wallet, whether in the pre sale, but took funds off chain on day one. Well, I don't blame him. You know why? Because having funds in a central exchange uh, is a lot safer in that respect but having a multi-sig is safe too so i think multi-sig is is best for transparency i think DAOs use multi-sigs uh when they move because they move money on chain but the way george structured uh what he did from my understanding is he had to use a central exchange because it was yeah, central it's, a, it's a trading project we had to we had to put the money into exchanges to trade yeah because when you trade leverage on exchanges you don't trade leverage on perpetual dexes Funny thing is, I yeah, want perpetual. Yeah, we, we're, trading on, we're trading on cent, We were trading on Bybit and Qcoin. We we weren't trading on DEXs. Uh, the answer is it will be very helpful to everybody in here today. Okay, Josh, how how much money is left? Thousands, hundreds of thousands, tens of thousands. It's hundreds of thousands, right? Yeah, yeah, it's hundreds. Good. There you go. <clears throat> okay, next question. Thanks for the time. Thank you very much. Uh, your help with recovery would be incredible. I'm yeah. I'm I'm already committed to this, bro. Uh, thanks for the updates and making the same. May yeah. The first thing when me and Josh and we had a three A chat with one of my best friends from Phantom, a really cool guy. He's very smart. Um, he's also in finance. So when I heard the story, I just told Josh like, bro, let us get involved. Like I'm gonna talk about my experience with this guy so people know that he's real. He's not a a, a fictional character, and that's it. Yeah, because uh, from, from your guys' perspective, you guys don't know this Michael guy. It just seemed like I had put up a fucking PDF and just said, just, and just said, a guy called Michael ran off with the funds. Like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Obviously, we're gonna come out with like everything. You guys yeah, have to realize good. that there's there's a lot of fucking moving parts here that we have to kind of unravel. Through as well yes. yeah yes. as know, well I, as I, well as as well as trying to rebuild or or refund or something like that but we just there's there's a fucking shitload to do and we just have to take it one step at a time yeah i told you for transparency purposes people are anxious that there's no money left 
show them the money first thing that you should be doing uh show make the multi-sig with people that you trust uh, people that are in your proximity or people that have something to lose more than michael michael had nothing to lose bro i'll, I'll tell you why he docks to you and docks to other people is because uh, professionally speaking he was doing fuck all so he had nothing to lose uh that's why he he doxed uh because he quit when he when, when we did well in two ohm he called his boss and i heard the conversation and he's like Fuck you, you piece of shit. I made it. I'm a millionaire. I don't need to work for you again. You know, that a 40 year old man. Yeah, he was a 40 year old man calling his boss to tell him that he's the man now. Yeah, he, he dude, I, oh, and I'll send you guys my fucking chat logs. This guy was in my fucking DMs. Crying about his fucking wife and shit, like yeah, yeah, like, the wife, yeah. yeah, 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 and absolutely, yeah, it f- fucking kills me how fucking stupid I was to fall for a guy like this. But he has numerous, bro, numerous successful ventures, including Matrix Money, Two Own Project, Orca, and Redemption. What the hell, bro? Everything that he did is a fugazi. Everything's fucked up. So I'll tell you first. Matrix Money is an LL. Actually, it's an LLC he registered in the US for the sole purpose that he registered at the beginning was to sell merch. Can you believe this guy? So he's making three, four thousand dollars a day, and it was not enough for him. What did he say? I'm gonna do merch for these people. I'm gonna give them two own branded t-shirts. And people bought like there's no tomorrow. People yeah, but he was it? making 10 grand a month, bro. And I didn't what knew about it. Fuck? 10 grand a month from, from merch. And I didn't knew shit at all. And he goes to me like, I can't give you the money, Lorenzo, because I'm paying the servers. I said, fuck you piece of shit. You're not paying $10,000 for servers. You're not fucking Amazon. Too old just, is a I, don't think, I don't think he could go through life without lying. I... It's like fucking ingrained in his brain, like a hundred percent ingrained in his brain. He will never be able to stop. Bro, I I'm gonna speak to this guy, James Gillingham from Flea Flea Mint. Absolutely. Is to break even current boundaries in web three. This is incredible. No, my, so this Michael, can... Michael's fired. Michael's fired from there. He's fired. Good. Fucking hell. Okay, so let me read what, what you guys are saying. Hundreds of thousands are left. Yeah. Dox yourself like Lorenzo has. Uh, that's up to him, man. I dox because I told you I have a lot more to lose than a color 100 grand. I am doxed. I, what do you guys mean? I, I've come on camera like 30 times. Um, is this go... It... That's not docs. We don't know who you are. <laughs> yeah. Well. Like full name and shit. Well, that's yeah. Well, I mean, maybe maybe once we like work shit out. But it, what would you guys think? I scammed you at this time. So. I'm pressed. Don't worry, bro. Like I know you have the feeling that people are are out there to kill you. <laughs> They're not. Like it takes a lot of time and effort. <laughs> To kill someone, trust me. Like maybe you have some fucking. It can't maybe... be at that level. Yeah, you know, like that that Aiden Platursky guy. Yes. I don't know. If you heard that story? Like he got like beat up or some shit. So you found his LinkedIn, bro? Yeah, man. This is the guy, hundred percent. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's yeah, I know this fucking his mustache, like fucking clown. Cloud Solution, exactly <laughs> what I told you. Cloud Solution Architect, yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen his profile for a while. AVS certified cloud practitioner. I told you, he used to earn 300 grand a month, uh, sorry, a, a year, and he was complaining to me that his wife from Philippines has to feed the village, like her family and friends, because that's the way with Asian women that are from poor rural villages, when they, when they marry into money, they have to provide for the whole family. So when you get one, you have to make sure that you can feed about 10, 15 mouths. Why? Because we're, do, we're doing an AMA because, like, like this is at least like a 
a small step to proving that this guy is actually real because like a lot of the messages I got were like, oh, this quote unquote Michael stole all the money. Like, who the fuck even is this? Okay, so uh, the, I'm I'm reading through your messages. I'm doing what I can from my end. I told you what happened to me, and I resonate with what happened to you guys. I lost. Just think, I lost. I only got out 200k, 250k from what I should have gotten, which is 10 million. So my I I hate I hate Michael to a bone. I just left him alone because at that time Tuom was still running. So an AMA is a way to engage with people, especially after these things happen. And Josh, I don't think he had the power in him to just come here and just talk by himself because maybe for him is the first time when he's hit with so much hate. Is that accurate, Josh? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Okay. So it's it's a it's a it's a new experience for you. So when you get thrown with so much hate, like so much people hate you, it's hard for you to come and speak. For me, it's nothing new. I told you, I've been through this so many times. Like when I took over the tomb, um, like sorry, the the tomb finance as a mod. When Harry brought me in after we did the the partnership, like people was to, thousands of people in the, in the, in the Discord AMA, and they were calling me names, making weird pictures with me, telling me, calling all sorts of things. And I I didn't ban anyone. I just said let them vent. And then in, in four weeks, we we were friends. So yeah. I know. Yeah, it's I good. haven't. I haven't committed fraud. I, I just haven't told you guys about this situation yet because I, I was just leaving everything vague. If you guys see, I didn't even like type in chat for a long time, and the proceedings were going well. Like, like we actually thought we were gonna get some money back off this guy, and like, because we didn't realize that he was completely frauding from the start for a long time. We thought that he had lost honestly and was lying to cover it up with his whole like getting robbed story. But there, th this is why it's taken so long because we combed through his whole account and and we had to figure out everything. And now we've figured out, and now we can come out and tell you guys with confidence that we know that we know what has happened. Yo, I understand. Like, look, you have a couple of people that are on the same line, like Slick and Alan and all, you know, out, out of 100 or 200, 500 people, there's always going to be like a, a little percent that whatever you do, they're never satisfied. I, I, I get your point. You lost money. It looks grim, but give the guy a chance. If he, if he takes a day or two to give you what you need to learn and then give you some things that could be happening, make them the decision. Because now, if you tell him, give me the money now, it's not going to happen. Like, let's be real. Because why, why is it not going to happen? Because even if he wanted to do it, how many wallets does he need to take into account? How much time does that take? It's crazy. <clears throat> if he's Alex a scammer, said, why did you give the, fund, the accounts? He didn't. Look, Michael is a very convincing guy. So he brought fake API data from what Josh told me. Uh, so he no, gave no, him no, all actual account we went into his actual account he he thought there were so many trades that we wouldn't bother to go through it and he thought he had us convinced so yeah that that's that's why he let us go through his account because he was like hoping we wouldn't go through the whole thing at least that's my theory like why else would he allow us to see that he had 150k plus losses before he even before we even deposited money into his account like it doesn't make any sense look the thing is very simple <clears throat> where's the money the money is in the central account and you'll be able to see it soon i i don't control the money it's in josh's hands in the team so when that becomes available and a viable option for you guys to see it on chain like a multi sig gnosis whatever you choose to use happens then you're going to see what's left. From what my understanding, you guys raised how much? 1.6? Yeah, yeah, 1.6. So 1.6. So you lost to Michael 900 a million, right? Something like a million, a million one, a million two. How much did you lose? Yeah, yeah. So you have like 400,000, something like that. Yeah, exactly. 
Okay, so that's still a considerable amount of money, 20%, 30%. You can still do a lot of things with that money. Anyway, go to good places. Why wouldn't you go through everything before giving him a million dollars? Um, you're a failure, dude. You suck. Bro, you know what? I don't even know. Like, with people this, like you, this I have Alex, nothing to say. This Alex guy was like in my DM saying he's going to find me and fucking grind me up or some shit, man. <laughs> like, I don't I understand. I don't know why he's he's upset, but you can time him out if you want. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, if I thought I If he's becoming... Man. No, not bad. You never ban people. Never. There's, there's no point. Like, people change. Like, to, today maybe he's upset. Tomorrow he's, he's going to be less upset. Who knows? I don't know anyone's personal convictions, and I don't know what's going through their lives, so I don't judge anyone. Josh bans people. Yeah, well, yeah. We had, like, we had, like, 70 people banned because people just, like, keep going on. Look... When I used to run to home, I told Risky, I'm not banning anyone. I'm just going to time them out for a day. Let them cool off, come back. If they start again, just give them a 30-minute timeout. Again, never ban. I, I just want people to be here. Just swear at me, whatever they want to do. If there's 500 bunch of people uh, sold, could you refund a portion to the remaining holders? Well, almost like you could use a community manager. Absolutely. The money boy 400k can make a good recovery fucking crazy money you can make with 400k crazy i told you in bnb you guys have so much money trust me on chronos it took me so much convincing to even raise 50 grand 50 fucking thousand dollars and i have a fucking perpetual dicks so i have a product that makes money but we don't trust you with the money josh absolutely multi-sig fine Time out is cool. Banish childish. L is very good. I told Josh, I, I would do the first thing I would do, and especially from a community perspective, is just unban people that are hard and have posed the big questions. Let me talk to them. Yeah, we, 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 we like went through and unban them, but the thing, uh, the thing, I, I still kind of disagree. Like, I, I think. Some people are just like so, like they don't fucking stop. I mean, I understand while I was being vague and everything. Like, if like been you, has you guys been have got to see from my point of view. You guys have got to see from my point of view that at the time I was trying to, I was trying to do the best that I could to get the fucking money back. That was that was my sole goal was to get it back and figure out what happened and. It coming out and announcing everything was not going to get the money back because we had to use that as leverage against Michael. Yeah. I told you, man, look, you have a good thing going. Just tell me about yourself. Like, is this the first project for you for, from your end or have you been involved in crypto in other projects as a founder? Yeah, this, this is my first project. Okay, it makes sense then that you're, you're, it's hard for you to talk to people. What the fuck are you going to do with the 400,000, dude? Bro, if you haven't listened to this discussion, then I don't know why you keep asking that question after one and a, one hour plus of talking about what's going to happen with the money. So I saw yeah, another guy that just said... to go around in circles, man. We, we'll end it, but... But, oh, like, just please... Okay, the last thing I'll say is the way I was running the project before was was because i was trying to deal with this in the background and i was trying to i was trying to get everything fixed up in the best way i could and i at the time i may have been wrong i have no fucking clue but at the time i thought the best thing to do would be to bargain with michael and try and get some money back and that included using using the story we had on him as leverage and um and 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 saying that we wouldn't we wouldn't come out with the whole story if he could make a recovery plan and and start paying us back some money some guy said like i'm gonna read the comment because i'm curious uh he said there's a bunch of legit forex bots or just refund brew brew it's not fraud not fraud fraud would have been me saying that the funds were still there 
there's no fraud, bro. It's fraud. The association is, with fraud is different. This is basically being being lied to, defrauded by another entity. He didn't do anything with the intention to put you guys in this position. Just logged in, so sorry it's been answered. Where uh, were initial trade logs audited pro pre prior to the project launch? Yeah, yeah, we we did a like a fucking huge background check on this guy, and he just he had been completely lying to us. Like, like he had like the exchange that I sent the funds to that I hadn't been through before before the project started had over 150k in losses before he even took the money on you know the good thing about risky i'll tell you now he probably has a separate exchange account where he sends some money to so the first thing that we can check is maybe we can freeze some of the money yeah exactly i mean so i mean I, i'm not I i'm not guy... very um i don't i don't really think much is going to happen legally but we like We'll try we'll try everything we can legally, but just personally, I like if you guys have seen like the US don't seem to care about like DeFi projects. Look, Al Alex, Alex. So look, if a guy loses some of the funds, right? And in two months he gives you back three times your investment, whatever he does, maybe something is gonna happen that's gonna bring you a lot of money. What will you say then? Like will you say this guy's shit? Maybe he's done the. Maybe this is the catalyst that you guys needed to become something. Maybe even if this Michael guy didn't appear, you would have fucked up on the way you were running. So maybe this is a sign that things have had to change. So it's not the end of the world. Things will happen. I told you, Gnosis is a good place to show on-chain data for money. Uh, running through different things, and I'm compiling my stuff that I have on Michael, and Josh is gonna do the same. And in the meantime, just give people a chance, right? That's it. The only thing you can do now is compile evidence, look for it. The only thing you can do, because if you go to courts, it's gonna take a long time. If you freeze these accounts, that's a different story because you can show to an exchange that this guy has Took the took the money, didn't do anything, and then just get it back. Like I I know so many things about freezing. It happens, but it it needs to be fast. So if you guys pester this man to just do whatever you want to do, it's not gonna happen, bro. The best thing to do now is just chase and then build the recovery plan at the same time. Show you stuff and then make the decision. But if you keep firing bullets at him now, nothing's gonna change. The man's gonna go in hiding and I'll talk to you. <clears throat> and bring the community managers back. I forgot their names. Stop for then everyone wants to refund. The community yeah. managers tried to fucking IP log me. Huh? The community managers tried to IP log me. You need to bring in real people, bro. Like I know I know there's a lot of fake people here. I told you I'm gonna help you out with what I can. And let them unban everyone. Let them talk whatever they want. You know, if they're too toxic, time them out. That's it. They they need to stay here to see because that's the biggest pain. They can't vent. The only thing they can do is just look. It's the easiest thing to do. If you ban people, you know what happens for, from a community's perspective. That guy is is hurt because he can't see, so he can't track progress. He's invested, so his money's tied. Um, so he goes around and, and just makes plans in his bed and closes his eyes and thinks of uh, the worst things possible. If you time them out, they're, yeah. they're still here, but they're not here, right? Yeah, that's true. We, like, like, I could have just, like, banned them from general and had them look at announcements or something. No, no, time them out. If you time people out, it's not like banning them. They can look, but they can't type. No, 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 so, no, no. Just, just, just like, just like banned from typing in general, but they can still see everything. Yeah, that's, that's time out. If you time out someone, they can't do shit. They can only look. You were doing it in pre-sale. Well, I don't know. I told you, look, my friend, MG with the ape, uh, Josh is new to crypto. He told you guys in this AMA as well. If someone's new to crypto and he handles the Web3 community and you guys, some of you, I think, have been in this space for a long time, 
I'm looking at you, MG. You're you've been on Discord from fifth of November, 2020. So you've been in this space for a damn long time. So you know about crypto. I know. So you've been in NFTs. You got rugged. You got in memes. You you did a lot of things. So there's ways to tackle things. If if, if refund is a thing, a refund is a thing. If uh, a recovery plan is a thing, a recovery plan is a thing. Now, what you're demanding at this particular point in time is not something that can be done by the click of hands. Things need to be done. There's a specific action plan that will be taken. That's my consensus, right? If you give an action plan that by tomorrow, I'm going to provide you this in like 20 hours, five hours, 10 hours, I'm going to give you this because the money is not what's left is not running away. That's the only thing you need to know for now. He needs to cough up. Yeah, sure. Why wouldn't he have a say? Yeah, yeah, man. People can have says. Absolutely. I told you. I shared my LinkedIn. I posted it. <clears throat> I'll tell you. And this is where I'll end it. And that's it. <clears throat> um, we have, in real life, we have a leverage fund. So I get to see a thousand businesses a month for investment options. Out of those 1,000 businesses, I think less than five get the money. And out of the five, at least one of them has absolutely no chance to recover So for us to recover the money from. But why do we give them the money? Because, I'll give you an example. Uh, a hotel needs a refurbishment, and they want 20 million. Um, the hotel is worth 60. So on the 20 million, they use the hotel as collateral. So obviously, they're, they're not in a situation to pay the money. And it's very hard for them to do. The bank doesn't want to take it. So they come to funds. They use the hotel as collateral. So our upside is 40 million because we have some buyers ready that will take it for 50. So it's easy. You know, some businesses are just programmed to fail. But if it fails, it doesn't mean it's not profitable. So that's it. You know, I told you. I, I didn't lie. I didn't lie. I just I just didn't like say anything for this whole time because because I I was just trying to work shit out like I I don't like do you guys not understand that if I had come out and said Michael had lied like this blah 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 first of all it would only be a half story because we didn't know the full the full um scope of everything at that time and second of all we were using it as leverage to try and get some money off Michael. Yeah, exactly. I told you, Josh, look, I understand you're kind of fragile at this point. You made me a mod. I'll help you out. Even though I run my own project, it doesn't matter. I, I work 20 hours a day. I don't have holidays. I fucking do Monday to Sunday. Uh, real life shit. I run a couple of other things, Web two, Web three. It doesn't matter to me. Like, I'm I'm invested in many things because I just want in like ten years to be relaxing. Uh, that's why I'm pushing. I'm thirty. There's plenty of time for me to push through. I don't have any heart diseases or any kind of diseases, so I'm gonna be around. Hopefully, God bless. Uh, I don't do drugs, so I'm cool from that ex from that extent. So, you know, I'm I'm happy he brought me in as a mod. I'm happy to have shared my story. Uh, I'm going to write up with Josh after we close this AMA, like a step-by-step -step, uh, actions that are going to be taken, have a read through the announcement, and then continue to vent. People will get unbanned. If you're being toxic and you're being very violent in the way that you speak, there's going to be timeouts. And then you can watch and then calm down, come back again. We'll start with 30 minutes, and then you can vent again, and then another 30 minutes till we get sick of it. I will, bro. <clears throat> you can't wrap, uh, you can't start to vote without having something concrete, an action time. So the vote's going to happen. Uh, and that was it from my end. I hope you guys uh, enjoy and I'll be around. So tag me, whatever you want to do. And I'll speak to Josh more in depth after this. Pleasure, boys. It was a pleasure to meet BNB people. You know, I, it's not only scammers, it's some real people too. Never been involved in BNB, but I hope to come on BNB after I finish Solana and Arbitrum. BNB is probably going to be my fifth blockchain for my perpetual. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, thanks I'll for coming on Primordial.
Yeah. No worries, man. And uh, over the over the next few weeks, we'll be posting everything, and we'll also be posting like our recovery plans. We have some projects that are going to help us out, so so I'll keep everyone updated. Good. Thank you, sirs, ladies, gentlemen. I don't know. Maybe there's some ladies here too. But yeah, it was a pleasure. And yeah, you'll have me around. So maybe that's some form of comfort for now. I'll speak to you guys soon. And if you want to connect with me on LinkedIn, feel free to do so. I don't really accept that many connections, but feel free to do it. Thank Obviously, you. if you're a business and you need money, <laughs> You can always send the business plan. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. Uh, I'll be around. Thanks, Josh, for the opportunity. Yeah. Do it.